live, live. We're live, live. Live, live. Live, live. It's Matt's fault that we're late. Yep. <laughs> we've, we've determined that we are now f- 12 minutes late. Yep. Yes. He ate cheesecake at lunch, and that was the end of That's it. That's what these potlucks must it be. Was so, <laughs> it was for a good cause. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. it was good for a good cause. What was the cause? There's no cause. There's no well, cause. We, we There's wanted no to make sure that Stacy wasn't. Uh, we had a minor delay on the stream. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we were steaming the car, the, the the curtains here. Yeah, they look lovely now. They look better. My mom OCD is feeling a little bit better. There you go. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to Live at the Hive, episode one seventeen. I'm Dan Nadelko, and I'm Stacy DeSantis. Producer Matt, behind the scenes. I don't know. Like I usually cut it like to me. I don't know. <laughs> you're you're on. You're not on know. your game today. I'm a, I'm out of my element. It's the love in the air. No. Stacy oh, wrote me. Uh, yes. My she read me some Facebook posts today. And I'm just like, oh. There we go. Just There's the live. <laughs> Five people joining. Welcome everybody. So today, Hello. beyond our 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 shoddy production, <laughs> it seems to be a going contrasty thing. too. Now I'm picking everything oh, apart. Oh my goodness. I'm really picking everything apart. It's all good. It is a thing. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to Live at the Hive episode 117. <laughs> Today we are talking about social media, thought leadership, content, and how they drive lead generation and lead nurture. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> we got to get the sound effects going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to get some more yeah, hotkeys set up that. there. We do. There we go. I still don't like that overhead. I'm, oh really, I'm really being picky. <laughs> I'm really being picky today. I don't like it either, but we're still breaking reasons. in the new setup. It's only it's, we're, it, it, we're working it. It's only episode three with the new setup. I mean, whoever's running Honeypot Marketing right now, better late than never. Well, this is true. There's something yeah. to be said for that. And Stacy's watching and appearing. How meta of you! I wow. know. <laughs> I love, you got to support. Very good. Okay, so we were actually working on some audio stream delay. None of that matters to you, I'm sure. Okay, so let's just dive right in. Um, so what we are going to talk about today, and this is a bit of your wheelhouse, Stacy. Yes. Is um, content creation. Yep. Not crappy content creation. Yeah, quality content. Quality yeah. content. Yep. <laughs> and what thought leadership is. Exactly. And how we use social thought leadership content and all the other channels mm-hmm. to yeah. generate quality leads and nurture them through. And this works, I think the important thing is this works for anybody it doesn't yeah. matter if you're uh, you know roasting coffee or if you're selling highly complex SaaS mm-hmm. software mm-hmm. absolutely it's, it's the same basic concept for everything yeah yeah there's only one commonality i would say though what is, that? is it switching from being a business owner to a content creator yeah but you it, mean like all businesses should consider themselves media companies yes but, but, what? But, what what no way yeah Hey Maddie, can you down our contrast on that filter? It's it's <laughs> it's looking really high on you, on me. Look at it. Yeah, Whoa. and the saturation is really yeah, high. Yeah, yeah. Give it a little yeah, yeah. adjust. Stacy looks pretty good. I'll give it some love. I am also. I did. <laughs> so I did. By the way, I just threw a little bit of a wrench into the production because I changed that camera to 1080p 60 instead of 4K. Hmm. Which seems to have solved our problem. I think that looks a little bit better now. Okay. Sweet. All right. So why don't we dive into what is new? Yeah. So we do have a couple of uh, what's new articles uh, this week. The first one we're going to be diving into is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, uh, they've been adding some new features uh, to the platform uh, like Maniacs. But uh, recently, uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator now adds features to kind of streamline your workflows as well. Um, so it's kind of adding new processes to Salesforce, um, introducing a little bit more kind of um, mainstream ways yeah. to use it, like CRMs, uh, contact, etc. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things I think that's uh, I use Sales Navigator all the time. It's re- mm-hmm. it's really quite cool. It is on its own a mini CRM, mm-hmm. and I feel like they're building it into a social CRM at some point. But yeah, yeah. and that's 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 going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, the other thing that isn't here is that LinkedIn is setting sunsetting um, rap- r- rapport rapport which was their Gmail extension. Mm. So that's just, if you're a LinkedIn user, you got to say bye-bye to that. That yep. goes away. It didn't get much ob- adoption anyways. Right. But uh, yeah, um, integration of Sales Navigator into S- uh, Salesforce CRM is a, is, is a big move because then that ties together sales prospecting into your LinkedIn activity mm. and yeah. you can see all of that stuff in, in one user profile. 
Yep. Who's, uh, but one thing that was interesting is an update that they should have probably updated a long time ago was now it says users can now opt out of LinkedIn.com activity in their personal sales navigator settings. Like, so it was not really true metrics before. They were like looping in your personal mm -hmm. right, views right. and like content consumption. And mm -hmm. so, so it's nice to see that they've removed that anyway. So yeah, sorry, I just closed it. Oops, there we go. Do the sales house create more efficient workflow processes? Yes. Um, if you've got a sales team, highly recommend using Sales Navigator yeah. and, and doing so with good content and good messaging and talking to people and building. Hey, we've got 14 people. Looks like we snuck hey, into Facebook right Watch. On. Yeah, right on. The question is, is our YouTube live stream working? I'm yes. just questioning everything. Yeah, you are. I know. I know. Poor Matt. It's not Matt. That's not Matt's fault. It's on YouTube. Oh. It yeah. says it's upcoming. But thanks, Stace. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I do what yeah, I can, anyway. Matt. I try to help you. Well, that's not that's not Matt's fault. YouTube YouTube Live has been um, precarious at best mm -hmm. since they've been making all of their changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so moving right along. Moving right along, Instagram has also been uh, adding some updates to their platform recently, and they're going to be adding a latest posts feature again. So um, I don't know if everyone remembers, but a couple months ago, um, they kind of switched the way that they're presenting content onto your feed. Mm -hmm. uh, but now they're <laughs> going to bring back uh, just filtering through your posts for what was uh, what was posted like. Um, I guess you could say that most recently, right? <laughs> you yeah. still had a food I don't know. Yeah, I think <laughs> you okay? so. Yeah, I'm you need okay. to like you need to like shotgun a Red Bull. Yeah, probably. Or something. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Are you going to a cooking class with Michelle tonight? Anyway. Yeah, oh, I am. Well, yeah. I am going to cooking class tonight. So. so let's have a look at this latest post feature. Stacey, do you use this at all? Uh, uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I noticed that this morning that you could really uh, it was starting to show up more frequently in the feeds. There was less ads, actually. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm okay with it as long as they don't come back with that swipe to the left. Yeah. <laughs> They'll they never did. do that yeah. again. I was like, what? Was yeah. But like, it's, it's kind of interesting. Involved. Like Sometimes it was a little frustrating when you would mm -hmm. see posts and they wouldn't be the most latest mm -hmm. and maybe you're trying to follow a certain subject. So, so this is mm -hmm. cool. The, the snapshot, so TechCrunch did this, and I, I do like TechCrunch's articles. They're amazing. Yeah. But they have a snapshot on here where it's almost like a pop-up uh, if people can see it on here, but it's almost like a pop-up it says welcome mm -hmm. back and it says get caught up with posts from and it gives some users and others and it gives you options to see those posts or not now. So I'm wondering if it's going to filter out like accounts that you're most engaged with and then after a while it's going to kind of spike the like a almost like a personal algorithm where it's like, hey, these people have posted recently. It's just yeah, see these yeah. nine people's posts. Yeah, right. That makes sense for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or well, maybe yeah. they're integrating true. Uh, be, uh, the, remember they have that true friends feature, or uh, oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that didn't really go far. Yeah, it didn't yeah. go far. Yeah. But I wonder if they're incorporating that. Ooh, I was that noticing. Was I was seeing that, that's probably. Uh, I was noticing. I was seeing more personal posts versus businesses. Yeah. Too. Well, that's gonna. That's just gonna be uh, an increase in. Them just, wanting to, to you to boost. Well, yeah. they also want to story ads and all. Yeah. They also want to filter out the meme pages. From what I've read online, too, they want to kind of get rid of the meme pages, mm -hmm. and they kind of want to start filtering in more kind of community-based posts. Yep. Right. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, lots of Instagram uh, algorithm changes. I think this is also going to have something to do with your close friends if mm -hmm. you start setting those up. Yeah, I think that so would too. give priority of close friends versus anyone else you follow. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a feature that, like you said, Stacey, I don't think a lot of people kind of it, it caught off. But I think yeah. by adding this feature, they're wanting to double down on it and try and get people to kind of use it, right? Yep. That makes sense, for sure. Yeah. Yep. yep. So I think if you're a business, I think one of the things um, is leveraging story ads um, because they're cheaper and because I think if you're not doing Instagram advertising, you're going to you're gonna see a big organic yeah. drop. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. If you don't have a highly engaged audience for exactly. sure. Yeah. So you got to turn to things like IGTV, 60 second video stories, and then promote in the stories. And yeah. because the feed's changing completely, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's not what it, it's not what it used to be. And, and people have a lot of more control over it. And Courtney and I were actually having a chat today about Kiwi. Have you heard about this? Where it's like this whole Instagram channel where they're, going to have some pretty big names in there and they're okay. going to be producing these 10 minute videos that you can watch 
Mm, okay. On Instagram. On IGTV? IGTV? Yeah, like IGTV. But nice. Yeah. So yeah. produced content? Yeah, but just 10 minutes. Interesting. That's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, kind of neat, eh? We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I mean, the grin like, there? I I'll be <laughs> honest. Recently, I've been watching a lot more IGTV, and I don't know how it happened, but it happened. <laughs> it sucked you in. Yeah, Are you watching cat videos in. again? Uh, no. Yeah, you were. Maybe. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Uh, Facebook, uh, they're kind of launching another platform here too. Uh, Facebook's latest experiment is Hobby. So yeah. Hobby is an app that helps uh, kind of document your personal projects, whether they be hobbies, um, I guess maybe content, mm-hmm. uh, working on some content maybe, kind of giving people a little bit of an insight. Um, so it's another app um, that was announced last year, but it's kind of just focusing on new ideas and how people can react to that socially. Yeah, so uh, in, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook has an inc- basically an incubator internally where they do like startup type ideas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a real pretty... To me, when I first saw this this week, it's it's a pretty close rip off of Pinterest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they're having... I, I feel like Facebook is becoming just less innovative and more... You know, ever since they really kind of took control of Insta and, and tried to punch Snap in the neck every mm-hmm. 35 yeah. seconds. I mean, look at this. Even in this screenshot, I don't know if you can see it yet, but they have kind of subsections like Pinterest, like you said. So ceramics, and it's kind of like they're bored. <laughs> gardening, cooking. Looks very Pinteresty to me. It does look very Pinteresty. They were saying, though, like, it's kind of a mix between Pinterest and Facebook groups. Mm. That's yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll be, it would be interesting to see what else is in here because there's very, there's very little kind of tangible data like just looking at that screenshot. Yeah. It's um, pretty basic right now too. Yeah. Like there's not a lot to it. You basically create or show your progress on projects, mm-hmm. but you can't really share it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless you like yeah. take the link and like mm-hmm. put it in. Because, yeah. Like, it seems, it seems very, very beta. Yeah. Right now it's, it's only on iOS and it's only available in Colombia, Belgium, uh, Spain and Ukraine. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's not, that's only like what, four countries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So who knows if it'll be around. If you can even get it. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I was able to download it this afternoon. I was oh. trying to play with it, but they were like, okay, we're going to search within 25 miles of my radius. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nobody. So, <laughs> I, so, I, so I bumped it up to 50. Nobody. So, Uh-oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll All right. where it goes with that, I don't know. But. So just a quick note, because we're going to, I think we should move along a little more quickly because we were late. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. But just yeah. some FTC rules around influencer marketing. Yeah, so. I dropped this down because I thought it was important. Uh, if you're working with influencers in the States or if you're an American brand, um, this is going to be very important for you. Uh, you're going to want to follow these uh, new kind of um, <laughs> disclosures, yep. making sure that all of your sponsored posts, your influencers are making it known that it's a sponsored post. Uh, this is uh, promoted content, kind of like how YouTube has done in the past, right? Yep. Making it uh, e- even having a pop up on videos that this is a uh, uh, paid content. So uh, definitely look into this if uh, you're working with American influencers or you're an American based company. The uh, final line in this article was really funny, though. I thought society has enough trouble with misfortune on misinformation on the internet from trolls to election meddlers they should at least be able to trust that if someone says they love their new jacket they didn't secretly get paid for it (laughs) (laughs) that's an interesting little line um but this is i mean the ftc has been going on about this for quite a while and also in here is um incentivized reviews so if you're incentivizing reviews you've got to really be careful about how you do it Mm -hmm. um in particular um there is kind of a dark underworld of amazon reviews yeah um yes yes there are (laughs) are literally people that get thousands of dollars a month Mm -hmm. worth of free product Mm -hmm. and incented to put up those reviews on amazon because they're Mm -hmm. so powerful so i think two things if you work with influencers you've got to do the disclosures properly. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mess around with that, even if you're a Canadian company, because the FTC yeah. and the CRTC, CRTC actually have a binding agreement 
across or pretty much yeah. one kind of like they, they work they together pretty yeah. much one yeah yeah so uh, you could get fined by the ftc yeah. if you are playing in exactly. the u.s market but i think to yeah. be clear like this isn't like a bad i don't see this as a bad thing especially for marketers i see this as a good thing it's kind of like everybody plays fair mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. everybody well, plays it's about, fair it's about so transparency dirty. yeah right? i think authenticity yeah. you know like making sure that you're playing by the rules right yeah, yeah. it's just be about being clear i mean you see a couple of the screenshots there, paid partnership by Old Navy, um, or the hashtag ad at the end. I mm -hmm. think that that's probably enough mm -hmm. um, to distinguish yourself yeah, or your company. If you're yeah. an influencer, you don't want to get uh, fined <laughs> by the FTC, that's for sure. And if you're a company, the, the fines are even worse. And typically in these cases, I got a lot of this background from the COPPA stuff from the FTC a few months ago. Mm -hmm watched hours and hours of video on this and the FTC uh, actual hearing because I that's what I do. Um, <laughs> do you watch CPAC too? Is that <laughs> on occasion when I, when I can listen to those clowns. <laughs> it was actually pretty interesting. The FTC guidelines and the CRTC are really less geared towards individuals and more geared towards systemic abuse by companies. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which and is that good. happens all the time. One second. Let me just do this. <laughs> there okay. we go. Don't worry. Okay. We have this down to a science. <laughs> we know what we're doing. What's going on? Um, so it's really more for corporations that need to be worried about this because they will compound those fines and they can be pretty substantial. There's actually a history oh. of FTC fines, a timeline that's actually pretty interesting. So if you're playing in the corporate world and corporate marketing, yep. be careful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just dive into what's working. Yes. Yes. So let's talk about lead gen in general. Because I think it's a dirty word or perceived as a dirty word. Although every company wants you to You think so? It. I don't know. I don't think it is. I don't think so either. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. It's literally what every single company needs to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To mm -hmm. generate leads. And if you're, if, if you're in marketing and you're not considering generating leads, then I think you need to shift your focus. Because for a couple of reasons, in today's climate where we live, I mean, Google is getting expensive and it's still cheaper than print and traditional. But they're still expensive platforms to run consistently on. Mm -hmm. And once you capture a lead, you own that lead. When you own that lead, you don't have to pay for that lead. Yeah. Yep. And then you can develop a relationship using all sorts of uh, clever and creative techniques. Yep. Right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, how social fits in and like... Maybe, Stacey, you can talk a little bit to uh, thought leadership and, and what that actually means. Like, what type of content is thought leadership driven? Yeah. Um, the, really, to kind of break it down, thought leadership is anyone that is part of your company or your business that can actually offer true insights mm -hmm. and information about what, they're, what you're about, basically your product, your service, mm -hmm. and is using social media is a great way to use this platform so that you can actually build an authentic relationship. Mm -hmm. So we have a thing here and I believe we kind of got it from Gary V too, where you're constantly offering good information mm -hmm. and then you come in with an ask. Yep. So in doing that, you're actually building an authentic relationship with your consumer. Mm -hmm. And you can do this with many different platforms. You could do YouTube videos and have a YouTube channel where you ha or you could offer a white paper webinar. You could um, repurpose your YouTube content into snackable, you know, 10, you know, 30 second videos on Instagram mm -hmm. and keep it consistent, you know, and it's just about looking at how you're solving a problem or offering a solution. Mm -hmm. for someone and becoming a trusted resource so yeah absolutely yeah. so i think one of the things is um maybe i can do this um we have a concept here we call creating anchor content or it's called also cornerstone content yeah. so that's like your webinar the thing that you spend time producing that takes time is more complicated but has a wealth of information in it yeah and Another point about thought leadership is the thought leadership is also the why of the business mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. the why of things like things like trends, what is happening, 
So within every company, if you have a thought leader that talks about something like, as an example, the internet is turning into a video platform, mm -hmm. which in the, the, the yeah. case could be made that in to a great extent, all of the social media platforms are turning into streaming platforms. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Little media. Yeah. Like you're basically, it's not just about being a magazine editor or being like, like solely in one area. You're creating content that is on couple different levels yep. through that customer journey mm -hmm. and in so in doing so you're almost becoming like your own little media channel yep mm -hmm. and starting to yeah. talk about things that are less tactical and more about the direction of things in whatever industry yeah. that is that you're playing in and that helps to build trust and, and to be honest with you i know it, it's probably um you know overused but gary v is a good example of someone that's a thought leader he very he does talk about tactical things mm -hmm. but he talks a lot about you know the mm -hmm. why of exactly. certain things. In many ways, Live at the Hive is a thought leadership. Uh, you know what I mean? Too? And so. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I think even this week, uh, you had someone uh, approach you that said that they were watched Live at the Hive and stuff like that, right? And we yeah. indeed do. And, and I think one of the things is, is it's um, the important thing about what we do mm -hmm. and why we do this is because we are practicing what we're preaching and what we're selling to people yeah absolutely right yeah this is what we do but we also do it so if you go through what we do a lot of work on is looking at a customer journey of our own customers and yeah. say what are their pain points they want exactly. to generate leads mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now everybody wants that same fundamental thing right the question is how do you get there so and what makes sense for them well, you exactly. Know? And what does a lead mean to them? And exactly. what does a conversion mean to them? Yeah. But the primary thing, so that from a thought leadership perspective, and it, I mean, we could delve into the agency conversation a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got agencies that are Facebook specialists or uh, Google ad specialists. Yeah. Yep. Well, okay, but those are tactical channels. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's important to have the technical know-how to utilize those channels. Yeah. But if you don't have a tier up strategy, one level up, which yeah. is what am I trying to do with this, right? Yeah, yeah. And we often exactly. have to do yeah. that. We have to say like, we'll get someone that be, will be like, we want leads, we want to do this. Oh, I heard that we should do Facebook and we should do Google, but we almost have to kind of reel it back and say, okay, why? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the objective here? Like, what are you trying to sell, and why does that matter to anyone? And where do we fit in? Yep. And where do we? Uh, you know, approach them in their journey that makes sense. And that's where you get into the see, think, do, care, right? Yep. So. Well, that's, yeah, and that's the that's our framework that we've adapted from Avident Kaushik. Um, but I think that, yeah, the important thing, like when we sit down and start to look at this and when you map it out, because it is a customer journey map, is you have to mm -hmm. start with a persona, mm -hmm. and that is a statement of belief, of pain points, of fears, of pressures, of personality, that you're trying to model that, to your customer, right? Yeah. And then looking at that journey and saying, okay, what is their pain point, right? What's the emotion they're feeling? Like, what are the, the emotion? Time? Are they yeah. stressed? Are they excited? Are they sad? Are they, yeah, you know, what? Exactly. And then from that, we can craft content to help solve those pain points. And that's when you get mm -hmm. to, to creating valuable content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And it's not always like someone could argue that we're, not attacking, but we're approaching someone when they're vulnerable, where it's not really that at all. It's understanding what their pain point is, but then seeing how our the customer we're working for, how they can offer a solution. So sure. how, they, how we can spin it, I guess, is a way to say, this is how this person's going to provide value to you. Sure. I mean, you know? you know, if you look at it from a want need, like marketing is taking someone from a before state to an after state. Mm -hmm. before they needed something they mm -hmm. need their pool clean they need their furnace repair <laughs> they need that thing on amazon exactly yeah. right yeah. whatever it is mm -hmm. and marketing is getting that person over the line to get to the after state which is the purchase that solves their problem exactly right yeah so the map and journey we're trying to put together so if you have a pool company and you know the pain points right um my water has algae in it okay yeah. I'm going to Google that. I'll YouTube that. I'm going to find a video on how to clean my pool. And yeah. if you're a pool provider, yeah. then you've got a strong YouTube presence. Mm -hmm. Then you're providing that person with a ton of value. That person will then want to come and purchase from you. Exactly. Because right? I think a misconception when it comes to thought leadership too is that you have to be 
the CEO of the company or you have to be a VP of a company when in yeah. fact you might be a thought leader if you are the pool repairman because that is your that that's what you do yeah. every day and you know hacks or tips and tricks and when Jacob Fernandez yeah. was here from Vidyard a couple of weeks ago yeah um, he's and, and what I like about what their strategy is is they're positioning their entire team as thought leaders mm -hmm. in their in their space. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Tyler Lassard does the chalk talk and and they use video throughout and they all create video mm -hmm. throughout that company, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's an important that's a, a really important thing to do is to treat it as if this is not something somebody has to do for me. Yeah. This is something that we can do. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. I think when we talk about thought leadership too, I think there's a certain sense of being genuine in your content as well. I think oh, yeah. I think there's a very fine line between putting out something uh, to attain a goal that's that's very blatant, rather than putting out information that's just it's genuine <laughs> information that you want to give people. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I, I you think never you never want to pump it out just to pump it out. That's yeah. what I, that's what I always say. Yeah. You know, you want to make sure that it makes sense. What yeah. problem does it solve? You don't want to be it, spammy. You don't want to be like too over the top. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. No, and that's that's important because that has to do with content quality. And if you're just creating noise, then you're doing yourself a disservice. It's better yeah. to take your time and create quality content mm -hmm. that is of value to people. Um, rather than trying to overdo how yeah. much content, it's better to put out small amounts of content mm -hmm. that is valuable than to put out a volume of content that's useless. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And always try to say something. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just quickly <laughs> share, and, and this is going to be good because I'm hoping this will motivate uh, Justin and Matei. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> it's it's one of my lucid it's one of my lucid charts. Oh, it's it it tells the story, okay? Dan's known for his lucid charts. Over five hundred and ninety-seven of them at this point. Oh. <laughs> I gotta admit, actually, that you it converted was converted me to the lucid chart family. Yes, yeah. and and actually, that's something that um, it takes a little bit of practice once you get into lucid chart. Oh, look it. Over here. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. There's actually a, a quite a few tricks to lose a chart, but uh, it's once you get into it, it's a good one. Okay, Matt, you can bring this up now. Wait till you base camp. Yep, I so, how do we create a content machine that is something that everybody can participate in and that has a consistent voice across all of these channels, right? So. Let me know when you pull that one up. Yeah, I have it up. Okay. <laughs> so if you look at the anchor content and the what, by breaking this down is you have at the bottom low frequency, yeah. at mm -hmm. the top high frequency, mm -hmm. at the bottom webinar video, live stream, white paper, you've got long form content. It's more difficult. It, it takes time to put together. And then what you need to do is take that content and start to deconstruct it, decompose it, turn it into smaller snackable bits. Mm -hmm. So you can turn a webinar into a case study, into a blog post anchor page or an yep. email series. You can then turn those into smaller blog posts, infographics, possibly YouTube video. LinkedIn, LinkedIn article. article. That's important, yeah. right? <laughs> yep. And then at the top level where you have your high frequency, you've got a LinkedIn post, Instagram post, Facebook, social lead magnet, LinkedIn social video, or Facebook social video, which are bite-sized, snackable content. And by using a, a process like yeah. this with a good topic, you'll have a consistency and you'll be able to sustain that social media content schedule yeah. um, to reinforce your message. Exactly. Right? Without spinning around in circles. Yeah, going, what are we going to post? Yes. Yeah. What? And that, yeah. is, that is the danger. Yeah, That is absolutely. the danger. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just to kind of sum up, because it's already five... 10 past five. Mm -hmm. What? 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 Don't buy pretty quick. That's I know. Quick. We're talking about my favorite subject. Yes. <laughs> um, so <laughs> when you talk about thought leadership and, and what that means is where your industry is going, what are the big moves, what are the things, but thought leadership to Stacy's point mm -hmm. is also being a leader to, to your followers, to people that are of interest, uh, interested. If you're, if you're the pool repair guy, yeah. You can be a thought leader in, in, in pool repair. Yeah. yeah. That you shouldn't limit it to anything because it's just called thought leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've mentioned this before on The Hive where 
a lot of people or a lot of companies will be like, we don't have any content. Mm -hmm. And we're like, you have so much <laughs> content. Yeah. Like, let's just, you know, break it down for you. And Open show up one you. of the 37,000 emails you have in your yep. inbox. Exactly. One, yeah. you know, like. one way that I, I really see this content being used to is um, some people may know I used to work in pest control. Uh, during oh, university, you know, we had, and um, this is something I did not know. Yeah, <laughs> and um, there's also YouTube videos on there of companies putting down uh, how to look for signs that you have something, quick tips on how to take care of it, things like that. Mm -hmm. There's people who have channels dedicated to removing like bees nests and wasp nests and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it's a really great <laughs> example of how people leverage uh, their thought leadership in order to build a community, really too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, just to wrap it up, I know we kind of referenced the, the bigger influencers, the Gary V's of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But don't forget, this is a world of tribes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Not everyone's a Joe Rogan. No. You know, or a Gary V. Yeah. yeah. But if you build up your community and your tribe, if you're a local business, mm -hmm. then yeah. you're building a customer base. And yeah. how strong? And you're, and you're generating leads. I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about. Exactly. Is it's not a dirty word. Yeah. It's actually doing it legitimately and fostering a relationship with people who know mm -hmm. who you are and want your content. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that was a very thought leadership -y style live yeah. I feel very informed now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've, I'm hoping that the, the delays and everything, but the, the stream looks good. Yeah, the stream does look good. It's looking solid. I like that plant, too. We had a different one uh, up on staging, but unfortunately, this one took the spotlight. The jade. I like the jade. I Me think too. the jade's the way to go. Me too. What did Matei name that one? I can't remember. Does he name all the plants? Oh, yeah. I've got baby you know, Yoda upstairs now. <laughs> you got baby Yoda, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what would look good is like a thing of um, wheatgrass. Like cat grass. But then I'd have to. I can bring it, it in. I got cat grass. <laughs> oh, no. How long does cat grass last? For? Oh, like not long. Cat no. grass dies very quickly. But wheat grass, which is it's a type. Cat grass is a type of wheat grass. Yeah, wheat grass would last if you keep it well watered a long time. Yeah. Not long with me. I'll juice it. Don't you dare. Yeah. <laughs> I found a matcha turmeric tea thing I was going to send you. Really? I did. Oh, oh April's posting so much matcha stuff on Facebook. You should see all the matcha stuff that she has on, <laughs> from Japan. Oh, I yes, know. April they is halfway like through cubes. her Japan. Oh, Mate says Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Shout out to Baby Yoda. <laughs> we should just have a... Mate, we need a transparent PNG of Baby Yoda we can violate copyrights with and just throw them up on the screen. <laughs> exactly. From time to time. All right, everybody. It is 514 on Friday of a long weekend. I am shocked that we have eight viewers at this moment. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> happy, happy Valentine's happy Hallmark Day. Holiday. <laughs> oh, you're one of those. A little bit. Oh. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> pragmatic and practical? <laughs> 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 Me too. Let's <laughs> slaughter some flowers so they can die in a week and we can all spend money so FTD and the florists make a fortune. Mm -hmm. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Uh -huh. <laughs> all, right. all right all right everybody well have a great long weekend if you are in and most people get long weekends this weekend mm -hmm. yeah. malls yeah. are closed states I think, and yeah. i think all of the states is a long weekend really i think it's mm. a national holiday nope no new york Quebec is different i think yeah well, Quebec isn't of course Oops, did I say that? Oops, did I say that? <laughs> All right, we got to cut it. We got to cut, <laughs> cut this off before I start getting a bunch of my Quebecois friends angry. Wait. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week on Live Next week.